coming up, discover what to do to create a sanctuary for birds, butterflies, and small mammals in your yard. Next on Wildlife Matters. How wonderful it feels to wake up in the morning, open your blinds, and look out to see birds and small mammals scurrying about your yard. What joy it brings to one's heart to know we're sharing our property with them, helping them to survive. With Florida's endangered and threatened species list growing at an ever so steady pace, you can help endangered plants, animals, and wildlife by simply providing wildlife habitat in your yard. It doesn't take much to plant a native plant in your yard that gives birds a source of berries for food. To grow a native flower in your yard that gives butterflies a nectar source to drink from. Or to plant a native tree in your yard that gives small mammals a place to find shelter. And in return, you're helping to sustain the native animals and plants that make Florida a tropical paradise. On today's program, come with us as we visit a native plant nursery and see which Florida plants are best at attracting wildlife to your yard. Then, meet three homeowners who are doing their part to help Florida wildlife by turning their yards into bird, butterfly, and small mammal habitats, and in the process, discovering that wildlife matters. In Florida, urban areas are everywhere in our landscape, accompanied by their abundance of buildings, cement, exotic landscape plants, and extreme pesticide use. With these intrusions on our environment, it's often hard for wildlife species to live here. However, many of these metropolitan areas are located near or close to natural wildlife preserves or county parks, where an abundance of wildlife often does live. What Florida residents do in their yards and neighborhoods can have a tremendous effect on nearby wildlife populations. If homeowners work to create wildlife habitat in their yards through the planting of native plants, they can extend the range of wildlife between preserves and parks, consequently helping to sustain and increase wildlife populations. That's why steps should be taken by every homeowner to create a wildlife-friendly habitat in their yard. Jim Thomas is the owner of Biosphere Inc., a consulting firm and native plant nursery in Winter Garden, Florida. His company is designed to promote the use of native habitat-friendly plants for landscapes and ecological restoration. Well, I'm a native of Florida and I've seen how much of it has been destroyed over the years. And I've also seen that there are things that a typical homeowner can do to promote wildlife habitat. Many wildlife species will coexist with man, even in urban settings, if the landscape includes basic wildlife requirements. Wildlife needs four basic things. They need food, they need water, they need cover to protect them from predators, and they need nesting spaces. We found there are a number of species of wildlife that can live close to human beings if these four things are provided. And that, and that simply gives us more species surviving in an area and greater population to those species in an area if those things are provided. Plants are the key to attracting wildlife to your property. A yard that's well planted with native plants attractive to wildlife will not only offer butterflies, birds, and small mammals a place to feed and reproduce, but will provide the homeowner with a rich native environment, a soothing retreat from everyday life. Being able to enjoy, observe, and even photograph wildlife in your own garden is a tremendous therapeutic experience. The first step is to add the native plants in your yard that attract wildlife. Unless you're just starting your yard or have some open areas to plant in, this may require removal of some of the non-native ornamental plants in your yard. 
They need to first of all evaluate what they have already to see what part is actually beneficial and what part may not be beneficial. For example, a lawn that needs a lot of spray and pesticide to keep it green and a lot of water to keep it going is not beneficial, is detrimental. And so removing those things that are detrimental and then replacing with the right species for their given area, their soil type. For example, most of the traditional landscape plants used by developers today are not native to Florida. This means they've been brought in from other parts of the country or world for their aesthetic value. These non-native plants do nothing or little to provide food and shelter for our native butterflies, birds, and mammals. Native plants, which can be purchased from native plant nurseries, have evolved in Florida over thousands of years and do a great deal to provide food and shelter for our wildlife. After you remove some of the non-native plants in your yard, you need to replace them with native plant species. It's simply a matter of choosing the right native plants to attract the right animals. Once you've created your native backyard habitat, you'll be surprised at how much more involved and aware you are of the life in your backyard. One thing I've found with people who really get involved in bioscaping, landscaping for habitat, the landscape then takes on a whole new perspective. It has a great deal more interest. It's not just a decorative thing. And that's been the most significant thing I have discovered about people who get involved with habitat planting. They have a great deal more interest in their yard and their plants and it's just a whole new process for them. Because now they've planted a plant that will attract a certain butterfly and they go there every day to see if that butterfly is there. Before it was just a green thing in the yard that was just for decoration only. Now it's a functional thing. Gardening for wildlife is quickly increasing in popularity across our country. That's because homeowners are realizing they can help offset wildlife habitat loss brought on by urban development by simply planting native plants that attract wildlife to their yards, whether it's birds, butterflies, small mammals, or all three. Richard Poole lives in Longwood, Florida with his wife, Christine. Both are devout bird watchers who have recreated their yard to attract these beautiful creatures. To Richard, bird's song, insect eating activity, and brilliant color make them remarkably welcome guests and worthy of making space for. When we moved in here, the area right here, we had rocks, St. Augustine grass, and Two East Malacca hollies were all we had, and now we probably have close to 50, 60 species in here of plants. We've, we've got rid of the rocks and added a lot of plants for the birds. First thing we did is get rid of St. Augustine. You're not going to have a lot of birds if you have St. Augustine. If you like chinch bugs, you keep your St. Augustine there. So we got rid of about half our grass and I'll probably get rid of a little bit more. And We planted shrubs like Walter's Viburnum, the Opon Holly, Florida Privet, the Wax Myrtle. They're all really good plants. They not only provide cover for the birds, they're bushes, the birds can go in there. There's insects there the birds will eat, but all of these plants will have berries at various times of the year. So we have the four plants, we get, get the, ver the berries at different times of the year. So. That's, that's what we do as far as the, just providing cover and food. Then of course we have feeders and we have two places for water. The one over here, which is the ant guard. And then we have a little make-believe pond over here that easier for the birds to take a bath. Birds can easily be attracted to your yard through the use of certain native plants, which provide fruit and seeds as sources of food. But not all birds eat simply seeds and fruit. Many birds need insects as a source of protein, especially while raising their young. Several plants have flowers that attract insects, which are eaten by birds. 
In this way, insects in your yard are an important element in a healthy bird environment. These insect attracting native plants can be supplemented with one or more bird feeders in your yard filled with bird seed. Locate the bird feeders in an area that's near vegetation so birds feel comfortable feeding there. For Richard and Christine, birds like cardinals, blue jays, and tufted titmice utilize their feeders all the time. And believe it or not, their favorite food is peanuts. Usually when we eat, they eat because we do eat a lot of our meals on the porch. And when we're sitting down to eat, one of the things either Christine and I do, we go out and spread the feet out and the birds come in and we all have our meals. Another essential addition to your backyard habitat is a source of water so birds can drink and bathe. Try and keep the water out of the sun so it doesn't get too hot and keep it filled with fresh, cool water at all times. If you'd like to attract hummingbirds to your yard, all you have to do is grow the nectar plants hummingbirds enjoy. Of the 16 hummingbird species found in the U.S., three occur in Florida, the most popular of which is the ruby-throated hummingbird. Richard and Christine have seen several of these sparkling jewels of the bird world in their yard. A lot of plants we have here for the hummingbirds. We, we really enjoy watching the hummingbird dart around. We have about 15 plants here throughout the year that the hummingbirds feed from. These signs let Richard's neighbors know his yard is a little different. Yes, a little wilder than your mostly lawn yard. While other people are working and bundling up leaves, I have a lot of natural areas there. I can just rake the leaves into the natural areas and so it doesn't have to go to the landfill, which of course helps. Not only does Richard's yard save him time, it saves him money too. Because his yard is made up of mostly native plants, which are adapted to Florida's climate, he doesn't use much water, fertilizer, pesticides, or herbicides on his yard, virtually none. All this makes he and his wife feel very good about what they've worked so hard to create. We enjoy seeing the wildlife around. When we first moved in here, you couldn't see anything. There wasn't anything here. Now we have the birds and the butterflies, just the variety of plants. And it just gives us a good feeling because we're, we're doing a little bit to contribute and maintain the animals that were here before we came in and destroyed their home. You can design your backyard as a habitat to attract birds as Richard and Christine have, or you can fashion it to attract more delicately winged creatures, like butterflies. Creating a butterfly or pollinator garden can be as simple as planting wildflowers in a collection of attractive pots arranged on a deck or patio, or as complex as landscaping several acres. Few outdoor activities are as easily available and rewarding as attracting butterflies to a well-designed habitat. Many of our native plants in Florida are in decline because of dramatic decreases in insect pollinators due to massive insecticide use and habitat destruction. Insect pollinators such as butterflies, bees, moths, wasps, beetles and bats play a major role in the food chain and are critical to seed formation by native plants as well as crop production. You can help by planting a garden that feeds these pollinators, including butterflies. Nita Villalobos Bell lives in a very traditionally landscaped subdivision in Sanford, Florida. Even so, she's worked hard to sculpt her yard into a beautiful wildlife habitat focusing on butterflies. So Nita, tell me a little bit about what you've done here on your property. When we moved here, it was all grass with two citrus trees. So the first thing I did was turn off the sprinkler system and I haven't had it on in three years since we've been here. And then once the grass started dying, then I started planting, thinking about, I started with my butterfly garden and then worked around the rest of the yard. And my focus was for wildlife, uh, birds and butterflies and trying to use native plants as much as possible and conserve water. Starting in the backyard, I've got my butterfly garden on one side. I have an herb garden 
um, not necessarily for cooking, but for scents. I love to brush them and touch them. And, <laughs> and also there's a larval plant there too for butterflies. And then um, I focused on uh, plants for birds that have fruit and berries for, for them to eat. And hopefully we'll um, invite insects also for them to feed on because not all birds you know, feed on uh, berries and, and fruit. And then I have on my other side of the backyard, it, I call it my woodland garden because it's all shady. It doesn't get a lot of sun. So I have to find plants, you know, that will grow in the shade. And I've got some native plants over there for that. And then in my front yard, I've tried to be respectful of my neighbors because we have a homeowner association here. And so even though I want to plant more informally, I make it a little bit more formal by outlining the beds, but use like natural mulches, things like that. For Nita, her butterfly garden on the back left side of her property is the most expressive part of her wildlife habitat yard. With a rainbow of color illuminating both from nectar flowers and the butterflies they attract, Nita gets a tremendous amount of visual joy watching all the butterflies interact. I've had um, black swallowtail, the pipevine swallowtail, tiger swallowtail, giant swallowtail, longtail skipper, cloudless sulfur, zebra long wings. But to have a successful butterfly garden, you must understand its components. First, you must provide the right nectar plants or butterfly flowers for butterflies to feed on. Most adult butterflies in Florida feed on flower nectar. Selecting the right flowers is very important. For the butterflies, uh, the ones that seem to come the most to, the butterflies come most to, are pentas and lantana and plumbago, which are not necessarily native, but the butterflies love it. <laughs> so I try to focus on that. And then they go to other things too. But generally, in general, they like um, flowers that have clusters, so they don't have to go and feed, you know, uh, spend so much energy to go to different plants. They can just feed on several different flowers at once. Next, you must supply larval or host plants in your garden. These are plants butterflies will lay their eggs on and in turn feed the emerging caterpillars. To make it a complete life cycle, I've got the um, host or larval plants in my yard and also the nectar plants for the adult butterflies. So I have a combination of the two. This backyard habitat is a wonderful safe haven for butterflies and other wildlife to gather, seek shelter, acquire food, reproduce, and build populations. She is saddened by the endless development she sees going on all around her, but has used her distress to move her to action. Because I get very depressed when you're driving down the street and you see lots being bulldozed, huge trees being bulldozed down. And my thought is, well, where are all those animals going? You know, they keep coming into your yard and, and because they have nowhere else to go, but they can't all fit there and not everybody's yard is good habitat. And so this is my little empowerment, you know, to make me feel good that maybe I can help a little bit and hopefully influence maybe my neighbors um, so our little habitat here can grow into the neighborhood. We've seen a backyard habitat designed to attract birds and a backyard habitat designed to draw butterflies.
Now let's visit a backyard habitat designed to invite small mammals. Cammie Donaldson lives on the east coast of Florida in a fairly urban area in downtown Melbourne. From a distance, her yard looks a bit unmanicured compared to a traditionally landscaped yard. But when you move in closer, it's easy to see this yard is filled with a tremendous diversity of native plants and animal life. Why did you choose to make your yard such a lush, beautiful native wildlife habitat? When I first bought the house, I was just beginning to learn about real Florida, even though I've been in Florida my entire life. Uh, and as a new, brand new homeowner, when I looked at what it was going to cost to put in a sprinkler system and the effort it was going to take to mow the yard, and I didn't really want to pay someone to do it, all things, these things started to come together. And I just happened to learn about the Florida Native Plant Society and find out that there was an alternative. And I said, boy, I am not doing this grass and sprinkler thing. Everything here is native or if it's not, we're trying to get rid of it, and it's all naturally adapted to rainfall, thrives on natural rainfall. The drought had absolutely no effect. You know, a few years ago, we went through about a three or four year period of drought, absolutely no effect on this yard. In fact, the plant right next to you, Tracy, that thing does best on drought. <laughs> That's called tough boomelia. It's a fantastic plant for insects, which is great for birds because a lot of birds really require insects, especially when they're nesting and they need to feed protein to their young. So a lot of native plants just really are spectacular celebrities during the drought. Cammie's yard contains an incredible number of food plants for birds and small mammals, including prickly pear, Florida privet, longleaf pine, dwarf blueberry, silver saw palmetto, and sea grapes. Even though her little one-third of an acre yard is located right in the middle of downtown Melbourne and surrounded by other homes and several roads, she still gets an astonishing variety of native wildlife. We have had a rabbit once come hopping literally down the path. It looked like he'd been planted there by Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> We did have a gopher tortoise once appear here. We're not sure if maybe someone thought we were a wildlife sanctuary and dropped him off. We do have three box turtles resident in the yard. Of course, like many Floridians, we have raccoons and possums. Um, I don't know that we've ever seen an armadillo in our yard, but we've seen evidence of armadillos. They dig little holes looking for insects. Um, and of course, we have snakes. We have black snakes, black racers and we've had corn snakes. We once had a coral snake uh, several years ago. We've never seen it since. Uh, we have legless lizards, the glass, what, what I call glass snakes. Um, and we enjoy watching them chase after lizards and, and other things. And we have tons of butterflies uh, because we plant a lot of butterfly host plants. As Cammie has learned, fruit and berry producing native plants are vital if you want to make your yard friendly to Florida's small mammals. Seedy berries will satisfy the hunger of many different birds, but small mammals are particularly attracted to fleshy fruit like grapes, plums, blackberries, and persimmons. Cover is also crucial if you want to attract small mammals to your backyard. Animals need cover, places to hide from predators, places to raise their young, and to feed in quiet. Planting a variety of vegetation in different sizes and heights provides the best cover opportunities for Florida wildlife. This includes ground cover, small plants, shrubs, and trees of different heights. Of course, you noticed out our kitchen window, we have a big thicket of Walter's viburnum, which gives us the ability to see a lot of birds. Anything you do to reduce the use of pesticides in your yard will also benefit wildlife. Pesticides kill insects, and insects are an important food source for birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. This little lot surrounding Cami's home has been converted into a thriving Florida ecosystem, supporting an abundance of native plants, residential and migratory birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and other Florida mammals. Deep down inside, she knows these animals might not be here if it wasn't for her. And her biggest reward is seeing native creatures scamper across her yard. My husband and I have had so many wonderful experiences seeing birds or snakes or the turtles. For us, that is such a joyous moment in the day when we get, are afforded the opportunity to see that creature, whatever it may be. And uh, 
that makes my day. It really is the thing that I enjoy most about my home. And why are some of us passionate and thrilled by life? I don't know, but I hope most of us are. And by planting natives and letting your yard be a little wild, you can really have a great life around you. As we've seen, native food and cover plants can be planted and grown in your yard just as easily as exotics, which usually provide no value whatsoever to wildlife. Native plants will not only increase the number of wildlife species attracted to your yard, but will help increase wildlife populations overall. And if you talk to your neighbors about combining your yards to make wildlife habitat, you will draw an even greater variety of species to your area. By each of us doing our part to preserve the plants and animals that make Florida unique, we will truly discover that wildlife matters. To share your feedback about this program or to order a copy of Creating a Backyard Habitat plus additional programs in the Wildlife Matters series, please visit our website at www.naturewisetv.org. Wildlife Matters is created and produced by NatureWise Incorporated, dedicated to improving the environment through educational television and video.